I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series of sharing with you some interesting concepts. Here we'll talk about powerful numbers. A powerful number is a positive integer m such that for every prime factor p, p square is also a factor of m. That is how we define it. To give you example of powerful numbers, these are the examples of powerful numbers up to 200, 1, 4, 8, 9, 16, 25, 27, 32, and so on. Now, another way of looking into this definition is that a powerful number, m, can be equal to a square times b cube, where a and b are positive integers. So that is uh, another way of looking into powerful numbers. Uh, and in this series, we find that the two smallest consecutive powerful numbers are 8 and 9. These are two consecutive powerful numbers. We have infinite of those. So, it is good to know about powerful numbers. Now, let's try to figure out how do we identify a powerful number. So, any perfect square is a powerful number. So, all perfect squares. All cubes. That's right. So, definitely, all perfect squares and all cubes are powerful numbers. Now, this form of writing like a square b cube is kind of important as we can easily identify whether a given number is a powerful number or not. Let's take up some examples. So we do have a list which are all powerful numbers. Now let's try to verify. So if I write, let us say 36, right? So 36 can be written as 6 times 6. So that is 6 square, right? So I could always write 36 as 6 squared times 1 q. So that is how we can use this. m is equals to a squared b q. We are not saying a and b are prime numbers. 1 is not a prime number. 6 is not a prime number, right? So a and b are positive numbers, right? So the idea here is that if you prime factorize 36, you will get prime factors and you will find that if p is a prime factor, then p square is also a factor of 36. Let's verify that part now. So, if I do prime factorization of 36, what do I get? 36 could be written as, as we said, 6 times 6. Let me continue here itself, right? 6 is 2 times 3, right? So, it is also 2 times 3. So what we notice here is 2 and 3 are the prime factors, right? So what are the factors for 36? So factors are 2, 3. Also you notice that 2 square is a factor, which is 4, and 3 square is also a factor. So that is what we mean by the first definition, which is a powerful number is a positive integer m, Right? So, that is a positive integer m such that for every prime factor p, so two prime factors it has, which is 2 and 3, p square is also a factor of m. 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9 is also a factor of 36. You get the idea, right? So, so that is what we mean when we do this, right? So, now likewise, you could verify all the numbers also let me take up 72 now right so 72 could be written as 8 times 9 correct now 72 8 means 2 cube right times 3 square so do you see it fits into the second definition right however in this case we do have both the numbers as prime that could be okay right so that is how we define it now, if you look into the prime factorization, then 8, the factors are 2, 2, and 2. And as far as 9, the factors are 3 and 3. So, you notice that 2 square is a factor, 3 square is also a factor. 
perfect so it satisfies the first condition also so that is kind of important to understand about the prime numbers so i hope with this you kind of get an idea about powerful numbers and this is the list of all the powerful numbers which include all the perfect squares all the cubes and also the numbers of this kind where we have a square times b cube combinations right so those products are also in the list of powerful numbers and we also understand that 8 and 9 are the smallest consecutive powerful numbers note that 2 is not a powerful number right now let's just see geometrical representation of these powerful numbers that is also very interesting so uh, let's represent one by let us say a square okay so one is a powerful number which is represented by a square for example the next powerful number is four in our list right so four could be represented in many different ways right you could uh, show four as one times four right so we could write this as uh, uh, we'll show it in three different ways. 2 times 2 is 4, right? And 1 times 4 is 4, right? So we could uh, say that this is uh, kind of like this. So we could write 4 as 1 times, this is 4 units, right? So 1 times 4. You can say 2 times 2. And you can say 4 times 1, right? So just 1 unit. So it could be represented like this. The next prime, uh, the next powerful number is for us 8, right? So 8, let's try to represent 8 also in this kind of a way. Okay, so 8 is 2 cube, right? Let me make it slightly bigger. So 8 is 2 cube. So I could, uh, let me divide this into... 1 times 8, okay, that's perfectly fine. And then we have uh, 2 cube and uh, we have uh, 8, we, we could do, uh, we could just divide 4 times 2, right? Uh, we could do it like this. Let me do it like this, okay. So what we have here is 8 small divisions. So we have 8 small divisions here, right? So that is uh, 1 is 8 times. Then we have 4, 2 times, right? So, so we have 2 times 1, 2, 3, 4. I could, uh, 4, these are all 2, so 2 times 4. And then we have uh, 4, 2 times, right? Or we could have 8, 1 time. So all this could represent eight right uh, let us also represent nine in a similar fashion so nine could be represented as what nine is three times three right okay so so three equal parts so one nine times one correct and three equal parts so that will give us nine so that is nine times one one times nine so we'll divide them into nine equal parts and then we'll do 3 times 3, dividing it into 3 equal parts, right? So, so let me do 3 equal parts for this. So let's say 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 times 3. And then we'll divide this also in 3 equal parts. So we get 9. So that is how you could represent 9, correct? Now, coming back to our powerful numbers definition, We want to write a powerful number m in the form of a square times b cube, correct? So, so 1 could be written as what? 1 can be written as 1 square times 1 cube, perfect. 4 can be written as 2 square times 1 cube. 8 can be written as 1 square times 2 cube. And 9 can be written as 3 square times 1 cube. So we could represent them in this particular fashion also, right? Now, looking into the prime factorization, let us look into prime factors of 9. So prime factors of 9 are 3 and 3. So you note that 3 is a factor, 
3 square is also a factor. So these are the factors. Is that okay? So 3 is a factor, 3 square is also a factor. So, so our definition of P and P square being factor is also satisfied. Correct? So I hope you're getting an idea that all powerful numbers will have a prime number as a factor and the square of the prime number will also be a factor. Is that clear to you? Now based on all this, here is a test question for you which can be seen in test papers these days. So the question here is which of the following is not a prime, is not a powerful number, right? So, so it's not a powerful number. Powerful number means we'll use this definition for the time being. You can do prime factorization also to figure out whether it is a powerful number or not, right? So you can test for 288, 289. Uh, and 384 and 343. So figure out which one of these is not a powerful number. Right? You can pause the video answer and uh, let me see. We'll just do it now and check. So let's begin with 288. So if I do prime factorization of 288, so we can uh, divide by 2. So we know 144. Well, 44 we know is 12 times, 12 is 144, correct? Now, 12 could be written as uh, 4 times 3, or I could write 3 times 2 times 2, correct? So, these are prime numbers. So, we could write this 2 times 2 times 3, correct? So, that is the prime factorization of 288. So, what do we notice? We notice that it does have factors as 2, and also 2 square, 3 and 3 square. Is that correct? So that means by definition it is a powerful number, right? Now the idea is how do we write this as a square b cube, right? So that becomes kind of a challenge. So I'll leave that exercise for the time being. a square b cube, how do we write, right? So, so we see that the, the prime factorization of 288 is is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is 2 to the power of 5 times 3 square, right? Now, how do we write this as a square b cube? Well, you can combine this 2 with 3, right? So, so you could write this as 6 square and 2 cube. Does it make sense to you? So, that is how you could write this in that form and then show that this is a powerful number. Is that clear to you? So this is very interesting to see how to represent them in this particular form. At times that could be part of your question, correct? Now 289. So what do we do with 289? Well, 289 is 17 times 17. So 17 square is 289. 7 times 7 is 49, correct? And 7, 1 and 4 is 11. So when you do this and then multiply by 17, you know this 17 square is 289. So I know that now 17 is a factor. So as far as factors are concerned, 17 and 17 square, both are factors. So any perfect square will be a powerful number, right? So and it could be written in the form of, we could always write this as 17 square times 1 cube, right? So B could be 1. Perfect. So that's how you do it. Now 324. So let's test 324 out. So let's do prime factorization of 324. So definitely this can be divided by 2. So 2 and then we get 1, 12 is 6 and we get this 2. Okay. So further, let's again divide it by 2. So we get 2 times 8 is 16 and we get 81. And... Uh, so, so we get this as 9 times 9, which is, um, so 9 is, uh, prime factors for 9 is 3 and 3. Correct. So we see that 2 is a factor, 2 square is a factor, 3 is a factor, 3 square is also a factor. Now, is it a powerful number or not? Well, in this case, we do see that 324 is 18 square, right? So 
So 18 square, that becomes a powerful number. This is also a powerful number. Now, how about 343? Okay, so 343 is, is actually 7 cube, right? So if you do 7 cube, you get 343. So, which is uh, uh, 7 times, you can try 49, correct? 7 square, 7 times 7 square. So, if you don't remember this, then just multiply and check. So, 7 times 9 is 63, 3 and 6. 7 times 4 is 28 and 6 is 34. So, that is also a powerful number so in our result we have all so which of the following is not a powerful number so so all are powerful numbers so in the numbers taken we i picked up all the numbers which were actually powerful numbers so anyway uh, those are the numbers to test with for us you could write some other number and you'll figure out that uh, most of the numbers are not powerful numbers, correct? And, but in our list, we had all of them as powerful numbers. Anyway, you understood the technique of testing whether a number is a powerful number or not a powerful number. So this technique helps. If you could write a number in this particular form, then it is a powerful number. If, uh, let us say, 2 is a factor, then 2 square should also be a factor. Otherwise, it is not a powerful number. Let me give you an example of not a powerful number now um, to end this particular video, right? So, so let me take a number n whose factors are, let us say, whose factors are 2, right? Uh, 3, uh, 9, let's say we're just writing factors, right? So 2, 3, 9, and let's say uh, whose factors are uh, I should have written 3 square here, right? So, uh, and let's say 7. Now, if we have a number with these as the factors, then is it a powerful number or not? That is what you have to debate, right? So, so the answer is no. Since not a powerful number, can you tell me why? So, the reason is that 2 square is not a fact. Right. So, since 2 square is not a factor, correct? So, at times that kind of a question could be there. So, if a prime number is a factor, then just check that this square is also a factor. Otherwise, it is not a powerful number. Is that clear to you? Right. So, that is how we could actually answer questions based on powerful numbers. I hope you understand and appreciate uh, what we have learned about powerful numbers in this video. Feel free to share them with your friends and if you like and subscribe, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.